folks, Andy Allen here for Applied Shorter Can. Let's talk about ego. Our ego can be a dangerous thing. It can very much limit us in our everyday lives and also as martial artists. If you train in martial arts, regardless of it being, if it's karate or taekwondo, tang sudo, jujitsu, whatever, if, if you hold fast to your ideas and refuse to consider the viewpoints of other people, then you're only limiting yourselves and preventing uh, learning from those people. You're, you're avoiding opportunities to learn. I know this firsthand because it was about 10 years ago when I kind of, uh, my shoulder can bubble world was kind of broken when I saw some videos from Ian Abernethy, uh, proper application of cut. And I've learned a lot in the last 10 years. Um, so let's, I'll give you some backstory here. Earlier today, uh, a video popped up my feed and it was um, an excerpt from an old Chuck Norris video, I think around 1970. And in this particular scene, there's a young boy and the boy's struggling keeping up with the class. And his, what I think is his dad is on looking and he's a bit disappointed with what he sees. In any case, Chuck Norris's character takes the boy aside and they sit down the mat and they're watching the class. And they're watching the class do their katas. And Chuck Norris describes what they're doing, the kata, as a simulated defense against multiple attackers. Of course, that kind of made me chuckle. And I made a comment, and I quoted that from the movie, and I said, even Chuck Norris didn't understand kata. I thought it was funny because, you know, considering all the, the Chuck Norris jokes that have been circulating around the world for the last several decades, it was meant to be a light joke. But anyways, this guy, well, let's call him Bob. That's not his real name. Um, but Bob took offense. So he said, and you do? He and I, Chuck, he and I had the same teacher in South Korea, and I learned that kata or forms are exactly that, meant for multiple opponents. So my response is, apparently I do have a better understanding of kata. Kata summarizes two-person drills decide, designed to stimulate civilian violence. There is one enemy, and they're in front of you. Bob responds, and I won't go through the entire conversation. That would be quite a, a long video. But Bob responds, obviously you don't do them. You think all the katas are the same focus is silly. Uh, English is not so good, I guess. Uh, although I think he's American. Anyways, one step sparring does what you mentioned. Maybe if you got past the first easy ones, you know the difference. Um, so I respond, angles and kata do not represent the direction the attacker is coming from. Instead, they, the angles represent the position you want to obtain in relation to your enemy. So in the Heian slash Pinan series, the katas all start with a movement to the left. It is assumed that the enemy is in front of you, and as they attack, you move to obtain an advantageous angle for yourself. Bob responds, Odd that the ones Chuck and I did anticipated more than one opponent, thus the various angles of attack that a single opponent couldn't come from. More advanced katas than that. Sorry, maybe you only learned the easy ones, which is nonsense. I know all the shotgun kata, of course. I've been training for 30 three, four years. Um, so I, I probably shouldn't have, but I responded, LOL. Then I said the purpose of katas, angles in kata is well documented. Read the works of Ken Lama Bunny. I went on to say, Chuck studied Tang Sudo, as I'm sure you know. Tang Sudo has its roots in Shotokan. Many of the kata are essentially the same. The practical roots of karate were lo lost post-World War II. Ken Lama Bunny criticized in multiple opponent nonsense but for some reason it proliferated among the Japanese and apparently this nonsense spread to Korea. Even Ian Abernethy tuned in and provided a nice eloquent summary of some some historical evidence for the purpose of angles and kata and to de debunk the the multiple opponent nonsense but of course Bob wasn't buying it. See Bob had been studying I think he said for 50 years, something like that. So he's been around for a long time. And so he's he's refusing to kind of consider something that is different from what he learned from legends like Chuck Norris and, and his teachers. So I went on to offer a video. Uh, I'll link it up above later. And just to illustrate the concept of angle. So in Teki Shodan slash Nahanchi, you, you have this, where there's a movement to the side and you throw your elbow into your hand and you do this and you do a down block and so on. And in the video, I was uh, defending against like a front choke like this. So we anchor, we find the head, we come off to an angle and throw the elbow, hence the reason for the angle moving to the left in the kata. 
And so what does Bob say? He says, so what? Your explanation, not mine or Norris's, nor Shin J. Chol or C.S. Kim, who explained ours to us. You seem very limited. So now he kind of starts in with the insults, as these people tend to also often. I filmed couples before and their applications, which included attacks from multiple opponents. And I said, you can film what you want, but if you're defending against multiple enemies, then you don't understand the original purpose of Kata. Can you share some of your videos? Uh, then he goes on, and I'm, I'm trying to have my best to have an adult conversation, uh, but he's not buying it. Bob says, getting a lecture from you is hilarious. And I didn't intend to come off as lecturing and demeaning, but apparently that's the way he took it. Um, I don't know. Maybe my words could have been different, but that certainly wasn't the intent. You keep acting like you know things that you don't. You're conf you've confused katas with one-step sparring. You give no reference to your statements. Who taught you this fallacy? And the films I made in 1972 were probably dust by now. Uh, so then I gave him a video from Ian Abernethy. From, he filmed a number of years ago talking about the embosin and angles. Because he, then he said, one guy doesn't change what masters have taught me. And logic reaffirms. I'm not sure where the logic is coming from. Uh, Mary Stevens did chime in there and, and she said, obviously, uh, logic obviously does not reaffirm this. Multiple opponent fighting in this way is a movie fantasy only. And the masters of which you speak are teaching in a way that is ignorant of the masters who wrote about and passed on these kathas in the early 20th century. Thank you, Mary. So we need to look before the masters of the 19. Uh, 60s and 70s to get close to, to the truth. Bob goes on to be a bit condescending. I think you've overestimated your experience and skills. You've demonstrated nothing that shows me or the masters. I was trained, but I was wrong. You just gave your opinions that were limited in scope to fit your narrow view. It's not true. I did offer some explanation and Ian Ebernethy offered some detailed explanation. He's just choosing not to accept it. I'll compare my experience to yours any day, he says. I don't care if you practice differently or that your philosophy is different, but to state opinions you did as fact is ridiculous. You really offered nothing but opinions that seem limited and biased. Personally, I don't care about katas. Well, that's the whole point of this conversation. We're talking about kata. Uh, don't care about katas or what masters taught. I've been in the arts for over 60 years and have trained with and competed against the best. Uh, so I don't need some noob. I'm a noob. Tell me what any of the martial arts are about. It's annoying and makes you look very limited. But that's what these people do, right? They, 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 because they've been practicing for 60 years, they think somehow that time in makes them an expert. Now, and I went on to tell them maybe this guy was a ferocious fighter. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is that the katas weren't originally designed for defense against multiple opponents. There's one enemy and they're in front of you. The angles represent, yeah, 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 you get the point. Anyways, um, the point of this video is uh, to kind of caution us uh, about holding on to ideas too, too strongly. Now, I did explain to, to Bob here that I used to be just like him. I used to, because I was taught in my Shotokan training that kata was for defense against multiple opponents. And that the, the angles that you move in, when you move to the left in hand Shotokan, it's because there's a person there. And then you move to the to this side, there's just someone there. And you move forward, there's someone there, and so on. And it's all it's all ridiculous kind of choreographed fantasy. It, it, it doesn't mimic real life. It, it, it's not valuable training. Um, but a boat... 10 years ago, I saw some videos from Ian Ebernethy. And it was he and Godin, the opening movements. And I thought, that's amazing. Because what I had learned from the opening movements of he and Godin was just utter nonsense. And I knew it was nonsense in the back of my mind as I was learning it. But, uh, and so, but I, I just didn't want to admit it, I guess. Um, but I just didn't like Bunkai because I, I'd rather just do Kumite. Um, it seemed more practical. However, that day was a turning point for me. It was a point where I, I was challenged to reconsider what I had been taught and what I was teaching, this multiple opponent nonsense. And that the kata was nothing more than blocks, kicks, and punches. 
because what I saw from Ian, and as the algorithms go, when you, you like a video on, on social media, you get more of, from that person and so on, or more similar videos. So I get more videos from Ian and so on. And I started to play with the stuff with my students. And uh, of course, I didn't have anybody to, to teach me, um, but it just felt more, a lot more meaningful than what I had learned, like using Uchiyuki, that inside forearm block, and smashing the bicep and smashing the neck. That made a hell of a lot more sense than blocking a punch from, and then the, they hold it out for you while you can do something else to them. So when I criticize people who are resistant to considering other views, I feel I can do that because I did that myself. I, I, I challenged my own beliefs and I, I looked at other people's work and I thought that is so much better than what I do. And so I started to embrace that line of thought. And of course, it's all supported in the old writings of the old masters. So earlier today, I, I made a post on my Applied Shotokan Facebook group, and I asked the group. I made this nice little meme, right? Matrix-inspired, red pill, blue pill, kind of keep believing what you want to believe or consider what differs from your own beliefs. So I asked, asked the group, why do people still cling on to the idea that kata is meant for multiple opponents, as this Bob fella did. So I'd like to share with you some of the uh, responses I got from my members. Okay, first of all, sorry I can't pronounce your first name. Last name is Nielsen. I think you're from Sweden, Oren. Uh, he says, safety, I guess this is how this is how I was taught. And all that, there are still a poop ton of people who refuse to look at kata as anything more than a dance or a multiple opponent stage fight. Dave Smith says, I think it's down to a general lack of critical analysis across the karate world. Not sure if that's down to a Japanese culture or just how original instructors taught it and that percolating down. I call this a cult of conformity. So in Japanese culture, it's one of conformity and it's not polite to kind of question, and especially to criticize your superiors. And that somehow is kind of bled into Western dojo culture and that we are not, are not to ask questions. Scott Shook from the New Orleans area says, I find most of the time it's ego, but not in a boasting manner. They have been teaching this stuff for too long to just say, I was wrong or I was taught wrong. They're too deep in the lies and not humble enough to admit it. I think you hit the nail on the head there, Scott. Ego is huge. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, having an ego only prevents us from evolving. Then he goes on to say, for me, uh, it was like a, a ton of bricks the first time I saw Ian Abernethy's work. The light bulbs were going off faster than I could keep up. I immediately stopped teaching the nonsense and start started studying truth. Awesome. I did go on to say to Scott uh, that we're kind of taught sometimes to put our instructors or especially the masters on pedestals. And uh, I know I'm guilty of that. Um, I was taught to believe that Funakoshi was some kind of legend. In fact, he wasn't the legendary martial artist of his of his time but there's different reasons why he was chosen to to spread karate to japan but that's not a topic for another video candace davis has a good comment she writes unfortunately it comes down to ego and a lack of understanding that inherently everyone's everyone's art has differences a true practitioner is continuously questioning learning and changing candace i couldn't agree more noah from arizona has a great point he says a combination of believing the first thing they were taught and the sunk cost fallacy. I think when they first learned it, they idolized their instructor and assumed the instructor knew the right answers. Years later, and thousands of hours of practicing junk, you can't justify actually admitting it's junk because of how much time you spent doing it. It's unfortunate. Lewis Hickman writes, I think it's intuitive at a glance to view the turns uh, in Kata as facing a new assailant, so lots of beginners can end up falling into that trap. As far more experienced practitioners cling to that idea, I remember when I was fir when I first found out I'd been viewing kata completely wrong. I felt a bit like a muppet. I see how someone would rather not make the admission they've been practicing kata incorrectly and just buy into the lie. Both Oliver Martinez and Ian Abernethy provide some context. There's a quote from Kemal Mabuni himself. It says, the meaning of the directions in kata is not well understood and frequently mistakes are made in the interpretation of kata movements. In extreme cases, it is sometimes heard that this kata moves in eight directions, so it is designed for fighting eight opponents or some such nonsense. Justin Dordery, thank you for your comment. He says, the blue pill is easy 
is an easy swallow. The red pill hurts the soul if you've been training for a while. Thank you, Derek Weber, for your comment. He said, most people are biased towards the first ideas they begin to understand. And changing someone's mind requires oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of work. So true. Both by the outside world and internally by them. They have to want to have their minds change. It usually happens because of some catalyst that causes a paradigm shift in their previous experience or beliefs. And from Jason Griffiths, he says, It's a cult. Being removed from the fantasy world of sports karate and the BS notion of multiple attackers allowed me many moons ago to have a look at the behavior of those still indoctrinated. It's funny looking back after we've, we've, we've uh, come out of the cloud to look back at where we were. It, it's it's uh, odd to think that there's still people believe in this nonsense. It takes a brave person to look at their investment and ask the question, is there a better way? Does this really make sense? And most importantly, would this truly work on the street? When presented with examples that it doesn't, the individual is struck with cognitive dissonance and digs their heels in even more, and it's hard to admit to the alternative that possibly their time and effort has been somewhat uh, or not fu or, or fully in vain. It's far easier to believe the lie, stand up for their sensei and dojo, than to admit another viewpoint trumps it. Well said. Thank you so much to everyone who contributed to the discussion. Until next time, I'm Andy Allen for Applied Short Account.